Hey folks, this is Riker, with a Diablo 3 patch 2.4.2 Witch Doctor build that I've seen clear a Greater Rift 112 solo on the public test realm leaderboards. I'll note that you're seeing me run a Greater Rift 85, but this is with unoptimized gear, low paragon level, and almost no practice with this build. Now this build is currently overpowered due to what appears to be a bug with a new 242 item. Depending on how Blizzard chooses to resolve this, this build may or may not still be a top Witch Doctor build when 2.42 goes live. Do check back in the future for any updates on whether this build will still be viable, and if it is, I'll have an updated video where we'll get into the nitty gritty of exactly what stats you want on every piece of gear. For now though, we'll just give an overview and cross our fingers that Jade Harvester Witch Doctor is back. So first off, the offending item that's causing the bug that makes this build work is the Gazing Demise. In patch 2.42, it's been given a legendary power. Spirit Barrage deals a ton more damage for every second it's channeled into an enemy, stacking up to 5 times. That totals 2,500 damage. But here's the bug. This damage buff is not applying only to Spirit Barrage, but to all your other skills as well. Based on the wording, this is not what Blizzard intended. But for now, it's resulted in a pretty cool build. So in order to constantly benefit from this buff, we're actually going to be using the Spirit Barrage skill with the Manitou skill rune. What Manitou does is turn this from a channeled power into an on and off switch. All you have to remember is to keep this up once every 20 seconds, and you'll benefit from that Gazing Demise damage buff. Now the reason we're not seeing this simply transferred over to the 2.41 top Witch Doctor builds is because the tops in 2.41 were pet builds, and pets actually do not benefit from this damage increase. It's only powers that you activate. And that's where the Jade Harvester set comes in. We've gone over the Jade set in the past, so the short version is that with the Jade set, Whenever you pop Soul Harvest, any enemies that you have dots applied to, damage over time effects, will suffer a huge amount of damage. And that's how the playstyle works. You run around, casting Locust Swarm and Haunt, these are your damage over time effects, and then you pop your Soul Harvest. And every time you cast Haunt or Locust Swarm, your cooldown on Soul Harvest goes down by one second. Since we'll be using Soul Harvest so much, for our main hand weapon, we'll want the Sacred Harvester. This way, we should be able to maintain a full 10 stacks at all times. And of course, you'll want to pair that with Lakumba's Ornament for that sweet, sweet damage reduction. Being a Jade Doc, this build does suffer from survivability issues, so we want to do what we can to pump up our toughness. For our belt, we'll go with the Haunting Girdle to throw out more spirits. For our amulet, since we're not going with the Compass Rose and Traveler's Pledge, you'll ideally want a Hellfire, but you can go with an Immunity Amulet as well if you can't get yourself a good Hellfire. For our offhand, we'll want Henry's Perquisition. This will offer a bit more survivability. And for our rings, we're going to want a Unity, a Convention of Elements, and a Ring of Emptiness. The Unity is for survivability. You're going to combine that, of course, with a Unity on your follower, along with a token that makes your follower invulnerable. The Convention is for straight damage. And you'll want to do your best to time your attacks with the rotation of your Convention. The damage type you'll be specking towards is Cold Damage. So you ideally want to be popping your Soul Harvest when you're on Cold Rotation. Meanwhile, the Ring of Emptiness, which has also been buffed this patch, further bolsters your damage. Lastly, Quetzalcoatl might sound like it's not necessary, but it does in fact buff your damage. The wording seems confusing, and it may not be clear how that interacts with the Jade 6 piece, but it does double your damage. As for our skills, Locust Swarm, we're going with Pestilence, so that we can get that to spread as much as possible. You'll note that the damage is poison, but that's fine. We're not trying to build up our Locust Swarm damage. We're relying entirely on Haunt damage. We just need to apply Locust Swarm so that we can benefit from our buffs. Again, that Ring of Emptiness requires you to have Locust Swarm and Haunt on your enemies. For Haunt, we're going with Resentful Spirits so that we can get enemies haunted as quickly as possible. This build runs Mana Hungry, so being able to affect more enemies with one cast is the better option. Next, you'll want Spirit Walk Severance. Some people go with Jaunt. This power is used as an escape, as well as a speed boost when traveling between packs. Next, Spirit Barrage Manitou. Again, this one is non-negotiable. Next, Soul Harvest Languish. The Languish rune on a full 10 stack 
will give us a good amount of added toughness. Lastly, we have Piranha's Piranado. This skill is used in just about every Witch Doctor build. It just does everything. It controls, it groups, and it buffs your damage. For our passives, if you're pushing the higher greater rifts, you'll need Spirit Vessel. Next, we'll want Grave Injustice. This is really important to being able to pop multiple soul harvests in rapid succession. If you group up a bunch of enemies before you pop your soul harvest, you'll be able to chain cast them as enemies around you just melt away. Of course, you ideally want to have a champion or elite pack in the midst of all that so that you can take them down a lot more quickly than if you could not benefit from Grave Injustice. Pierce the Veil is a straight damage buff. Swampland Attunement will help keep you alive. And the fifth passive you'll want with your Hellfire is Creeping Death. In fact, Creeping Death is essential to this build. Without a Hellfire Amulet, I would suggest swapping out Pierce the Veil for Creeping Death. But that is up to you on whether you want to go more defensive or more offensive. You could instead swap out Swampland Attunement if you prefer to go for damage over resist. Or if you really have balls, swap out Spirit Vessel. But don't complain to me after if you hate your life. And that's basically the build. For gems, we're using an Esoteric Alteration, again for that survivability. Bane of the Trapped, because this is a build in Diablo, therefore it must use Bane of the Trapped. This gem is just way too good. And lastly, if you're pushing the highest Greater Rifts, you'll want a Bane of the Stricken to really help with those Rift Guardian fights. But if you're doing Greater Rifts comfortably, and not really taxing yourself every time, you can go with a Bane of the Powerful. On your gear, standard rules mostly apply. You'll want Haunt Damage and you'll want cooldown reduction. That wraps up the build. You can see me finish off the Rift, and note that I have some difficulty with the Rift Guardian. Mostly, if you're up against the Rift Guardian whose attacks you can dodge more easily, then you'll have a much better time. Do remember that this build is being recorded on the public test realm where everything is subject to change. Patch 2.4.2 is probably still a good month away, but do check back for any updates to this build. If it's nerfed and just no longer working, I'll put that in the video description. Otherwise, if this build does make it to live in some form, I'll try to put up an updated video with all the exact gear pieces and skills and stats that you want. What I hope Blizzard ideally does to balance this, because it is currently overpowered. Again, Greater Rift 112 when all the other classes are in the 90s, Rather than fix that bug with Gazing Demise, keep it, but just lower the damage. Because I guarantee you that if they fix the bug and it now only applies to Spirit Barrage, we're not going to see this item used. If instead it remains as something that can buff everything else, one, that'll be more flexible in allowing it to be worked into other sets, and two, it will still shake up the meta. But leave me your thoughts. What do you think about this build right now? Thanks for watching. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders to be alerted when my next Diablo guide goes live.